so good. <laughs> hey, that's nice. That's nicer. The man must be an artist. Yeah, really nice, huh? Yeah. Uh, well, that's everything's nice. floral. And then you've got this. I like the yellow there. Yeah, but I see I don't want to cover them. Here, if I stand right about here. Mm -hmm. Okay? That's great. Good. Ready when you are, Mr. DeMille. You ready? We lost you. I'm ready. ready. Hello. Are you ready? For, you ready for Freddy? Are you in charge of this stuff? No, no. I'm on after you. Uh, oh, what is your name? Ken Barris. Ken, I pleasure. Excuse me. I didn't, I didn't mean to disturb you in here. I'm going to take care of what I got to do right now. You got you to do one thing for me. Anything. I am Spartacus. I am Spartacus. <laughs> Remember that? It's you know, that's the, funniest thing. that's the funniest thing ever. Two, three times a year, I'm in an airport or somewhere, and I'll hear somebody yell, I am Spartacus. Oh, yes, I there am Spartacus. Sorry, Kenneth, I gotta grab him. Come on out if you want to. Oh, huh? Yeah, I don't. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Let me take one more look at my monitor. Yeah, please, just before we go, let me just take one sure, look because no I'm in problem. that shot. All right? Let me just take it now. Yeah, it's gone. Here? Yeah, that's here. good. Right here, huh? Yeah, that's perfect. Okay, and I can, I can move that little movement. Sure. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Hi. Hello, honey. <laughs> How are you doing, Toots? I'm like a good ventriloquist. <laughs> my lips don't move while I get my makeup. <laughs> don't, don't bother me too much. I'll keep it very light. Thanks. Do you have a hand mirror? These for little people? All I see is my nose. I guess it's all right. Uh, what would help me a lot, guys, if I may, if we put this at a distance for no other reason than I could see when I'm covering or when I'm not covering. Okay. Huh? Mm -hmm. Could you put it up up there? Sure. Can we grab it back? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Kenneth, did you want to come in? You're welcome to come in. We haven't started yet. Did you want to? Uh, we're just starting now. Did you want to first stay here? Yes. Okay. You show me where you're going to be, uh, Patrick, and I'm ready. I'll follow you. So. Okay, well, I'm, I'm going to range in here, okay? So there's... Okay. Uh, That's fine. Okay. Okay, uh, let's uh, get ready to go. Sir, thank you so oh, much. Oh, yeah, no problem. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Hey, it's our thank pleasure. You. Thank you. Thank you. You're the man. It's mine, been mine wonderful. Too. I see you guys next week. <laughs> 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 Come on, we got it. All right, I'm ready. Start out any way you like. And I'm talking to you? You're talking to me. Okay. okay. Right. Are you guys rolling? I'm sorry? Yeah. I'm We're rolling. We're rolling. Okay. Tony, if you would just talk to me a little bit about... You'll have to talk a little louder because right. I'm a little deaf. Or come closer. Come. I'm still out, Patrick? Yeah, right. Okay. Um, just tell us a little bit about meeting uh, Ernie... I've got to see that. There. Okay. Meeting Ernie for the first time and how you were both cast in Square Jungle. I was on the contract to Universal in 1948. Square Jungle, I think, was made in 52, more or less. And uh, I had met Ernie earlier through Hecht Lancaster, through Burt Lancaster and Harold Hecht. Uh, we were all kind of friends. We had not worked together by that time, but we were friends. I was a good friend of uh, all of the guys in that area. I did a picture called the... Uh, 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 
with Burt Lancaster, Von DiCarlo. Uh, what was it called? He got out of prison. Crisscross. The name of the movie was Crisscross. And they asked me to dance with Yvonne Nicolo in a little moment, like I was a gigolo, okay? So I did that, and that was my introduction to Bert, and it was through Bert that I met Ernie. And Ernie and I, all as guys, I won't say because we came from New York, but, uh, you know, it gave you something or someone to relate to, you know, in an environment where uh, there was nothing like that. It was nice. And, when Ernie and I met, we became fast friends, you know, and I liked his gregariousness, you know, his openness, his uh, sense of who he was. And that's what you need in my profession, and that's what I observed in Ernie and in Bert, a sense of self, uh, uh, you know, the, the Sioux Indians had a gesture which was this, which meant I am the center of the universe. And I like people who have centers like that, you know, and, and that's what they were like. So I met Ernie up at the gym, and uh, he was always a tough-looking guy, you know, mean-looking, but he had this wonderful smile that made you feel happy. And that was the thing that connected me with Ernie a lot. Then we did the square jungle. Uh, was it the square jungle? You started with that, and then you did the Vikings. Yeah, well, the, no, square jungle was that fight picture. And... Uh, Jimmy Backus was in it, really excellent actors, and I was so pleased that I had an opportunity to work with these guys, you know? It's not every day you get a chance to uh, uh, get on a set with really excellent actors and find them so friendly and nice in a profession that I felt uh, the more important you were, the more power you had, and the more you yielded it. And a lot of ding-dongs uh, did that, you know, a lot of uh, fuck faces did that, you know, they didn't give you a chance, uh, you know, if they played the lead in the movie, uh, played it like they owned the camera, the film and everything. A lot of people like that. handful of guys that I ran across, and women, uh, that weren't like that, that shared that camera, that shared the set with you. And one of them was Ernie. You know, I was just starting out then. I've been in, in movies just, uh, oh, two years. I. I couldn't have done more than three or four uh, leads at Universal. Then I met Ernie. So we, we started a nice relationship. Uh, now, what's interesting is you went from the Square Jungle, which was before Marty. Yes, before to, Marty. To the Vikings, which was after Yes. Marty, and he had this huge kind of skyrocket. Yes, he did. He had an excellent, uh, uh, you know, splurge with Marty. And he was wonderful in that movie, you know. And everybody at uh, uh, Hector Lancaster... Loved it. Everybody at uh, the United Artists loved it. Uh, everyone that participated in the picture loved the idea that uh, Patty Shayevsky, you know, it had a solid group of people uh, writing, directing, and who directed it, do we remember? Delbert Mann. Delbert Mann, yes. I made a picture with him, too. He's an excellent director. Anyway, right after we did uh, the first one, uh, we hung around, we'd go to parties, and you know, I'd see him here and there, and then Marty came along. What, about two years later? Yeah, 52, 53, about 54, right? While he was doing Marty, I worked for the same company. When Marty was over, they took me to Paris, and I did trapeze with Burt Lancaster and Harold Heck, which were the producing company of uh, uh, Marty. And so it became like a family, you know, and we got to be really good friends then. What do you think are his strengths as an actor? Uh, I don't know any other actor than him that can give you those different emotions so instantly. He's the most gregarious, charming, funny man, yet when he played Fatso, uh, I don't remember anybody scarier than him. I just don't. There was such venom in his performance and uh, anger and frustration. You know, and when an actor will allow you that privilege to see inside of them, because they're not making it up, that is part of the fabric of who they are, then you're watching outstanding actors. And Ernie is one of those outstanding actors, you know? That performance in From Here to Eternity, Marty, uh, 
even the movie he made with me, you know, had a, a, another element of, uh, you know, we did uh, the Vikings. And then you did a third picture together called, uh, uh, What If They Gave a War? No. What If They Gave a War and Nobody Came. What is that, three or four movies I made with him? Three. Three. Yeah, right, and we worked on that one. So, you know, we've always been really good friends, but more than good friends, you know, it's a privilege and a pleasure to get on the floor with an actor that has such stability and such uh, sharpness in his work. Do you think that there's any role that kind of shows to the audience the real Ernest Borgnine? I think if you take all these roles and play them, take out those pieces of Phil Bernie, put them side by side like a montage, and you'll see what the man is, you know? You'll see, uh, he's extremely intelligent and quite amusing, very funny. So, you know, he's a guy that hasn't had a chance to play that whole variety. You know, they kind of limited his work to, uh, well, he, our profession is so typecasting, you know? Uh, it's just, uh, you know, there's nothing you can do about it. Well, he, he certainly managed to play other kind of parts, but he still looks and behaves like Ernie Borgnine. And what's wrong with that? I never found it a, a detriment to look like me and be like me, you know? I never believed in an actor's studio, you know? It's a lot of nonsense. They, a lot of uh, paper clips and rubber bands in your brain, which you shake up and say, oh, yeah, I see you want me to be... No, no, no. You can't be anything you're not. You can, yes, you're, good, you're advancing on me. Come on, I'll do it for you too. Thanks. Uh, you can't do it that way, you know? Uh, you've got to use part of yourself in everything you do. And when, when he came and you worked together on these various projects, how did he approach his acting career? Was he a method actor? Was it improvisation? Was he a rehearsal? Uh, Ernie? Yeah. No, Ernie and me and Bert and uh, another dozen actors, and uh, we're above... Uh, we're ab above anything, you know what I mean by that? We're intelligent, we observe everything we're doing, and there's never any scam between us. You can't upstage anybody in the movie, because all they got to do is put a camera over my shoulder and photograph all you guys, and then you know it becomes a unit. So, in a movie, that's what happens. Even if, even if the guy owns the camera, uh, you know, uh, Kirk Douglas had a tendency of doing that in movies, you know since it was his company and he put it together, uh, the, the emphasis was perhaps on him. But Ernie and I were in a movie like that and we survived it, you know. So that's it, you've got to allow yourself, okay, the privilege of sharing your moment with whoever else you're working with. You bring out the best in them and they bring out the best in me. Ernie did that with me when I played that fighter. You know, I had very little experience as a fighter. I understood what you had to do to do it. But it was Ernie with his kind of tenaciousness that made me feel like I was a fighter in the hands of a good trainer. You know? That's nice. In the Vikings. Well, in the Vikings, what's interesting is here he was cast as the father of Kirk Douglas. He was my daddy. You know that. He was my daddy, and I didn't know it. Was he Kirk's daddy, too? Yeah. Yeah, he was too young for Kirk's daddy. Kirk should have played the daddy of all of us. But that's another movie. Yeah, right. <laughs> but it's interesting to me because the three films that you did, you go from kind of a, a small, not expensive drama, a kind of character drama, right. to a historical drama, to a comedy, and it seems that Ernie's able to really play easily in all of these. Absolutely. Films. Ernie certainly did, you know. And uh, the first film we did together was at Universal, right? Second film we. Well, in Marty, he, I'm not talking about me now, I'm talking about Marty. Two years later was made at United Artists. Then our film, uh, The Vikings? Yeah, right, The Vikings came five years later? Not even five years later. Well, when uh, did it come? 58. Huh? 58. 58. Right, it was right after Some Like It Hot. So those five years in the 50s were very powerful years for the film industry and for us. You know, we were, uh, we could do anything we wanted, uh, all of us, any movie we wanted. Ernie could, you know. Um, why do you think that he 
he's someone who's able to have had such a long career. I mean, he's still working. Well, he's on his feet and he's alive and healthy, you know, and if he stays that way, uh, you know, he can manage it forever because he has got that kind of a strong, intense personality. You know, I know a lot of actors that uh, fade away very quickly and they fade away for no other reason than there is no drama or no energy inside of them. You know, an actor needs that, an actress needs that. Ernie is a good example of it. See, had Ernie not fit type, okay, if he could have been hauled out of type, he would have had a much bigger career, do you see? But you'll notice in all of these people he played, he always played a kind of, if not a nebbish, he played a, a secondary role in the Viking. There have been a lot of films that Ernie was in that were uh, outstanding, you know? But perhaps something uh, didn't allow him to burst out of that crowd. Uh, he certainly has everything to do that, you know. Yeah. He's a charming man and a funny man. We always have such laughs. He calls me Tati. I call him Oini. Have you seen him lately? Uh, I see, he ju he's just coming back from vacation today. I saw him before he left. Oh, good. Is he well? Yeah, he's good. very good. He went salmon fishing in Alaska. Oh, nice. So, he's doing fine. Married to a lovely woman. And we, we run across each other at different parties all over the place, and we always are so excited when we see each other and hope we'll work together again. Married to a lovely woman, but it seemed that it took him a little while to get to that relationship. Doesn't it take all of us, dear? Don't come overnight. Do you see uh, a change in him over the years? Oh, life? I have, I have. He's become a, a, a much more, uh, not only perceptive, but he's kind of become a shade more content than he used to be. He used to be so frustrated, you know? He wasn't getting the parts he wanted. And I can't blame him, you know, an actor of his, uh, am I okay? You want to drive me up? Mm -hmm. An actor of his uh, ability uh, to not get more work than he did was uh, very difficult, you know. And he doesn't uh, bullshit anybody, you know. He is what he is, you know. He doesn't want to try to teach acting or review movies or whatever else they do, so. I'm going to ask you if you could just describe for us uh, Kari Hirata, who was his second wife, just because we don't have anyone who knew her to really just... His first her. wife? His sec it was his second wife. Tova? No, Kari Hirata. Oh, Kari Hirata. Yeah, yeah I worked with her in trapeze. Right, just if you could describe... And you know, in fact, they got married a little while before or after trapeze. Trapeze was 55. After. Must have been After. Right. Now, wait a minute. I remember, when did I see them together the first time? It could have been on that movie. He could have been in town at that time. And I didn't know why, but uh, they were, you know, together. Uh, it it's, was, is a difficult uh, relationship. They were both in the same profession. There came separations. Uh, you couldn't be together. You weren't allowed to uh, exchange ideas, you know? And I don't think any picture marriage can survive it. I really don't. Uh, what I mean by that is uh, the separation is what separates you. Sure, you can be best friends and buddies, but, you know, get stuck away somewhere on a location for a long two weeks alone. All of a sudden, the chickens start looking good. Uh, thank you. Kenny Urado, uh, a very persistent uh, actress, uh, uh, no-nonsense kind of actress. She had a nice personality, but it was very stilted, you know, and she never gave up that Spanish background of hers. Not that she should have or shouldn't have, but I think had she done that, she would have been uh, perhaps more variety in roles, you know. They seem like they both had very big personalities. That must have well, been. they did. Uh, she wasn't anywhere as explosive as Ernie, do you know? But uh, 
they almost had trouble, I don't mean to be unkind, almost from the beginning. How long were they married? You know, not uh, a couple of years, yeah, two no. years maybe. And the business may have married them. You know, both of them were doing good. How bad can it be, you know? So. You never know. Well, I don't have anything to ask unless you'd like to make a statement. Shirley McLean. I would love for you to talk about Shirley. Um, I just had a couple questions. Now, talk about different kind of marriages. Her marriage to Steve Parker was very unconventional. Uh, yes, he was. Yes, he was. He lived in Japan, loved living there. How he convinced uh, Shirley to go there, I don't know, but he did. And then she came back and never saw her daughter again. Whew! Nobody never knew what happened in the daughter. And Shirley was, is a very gregarious person and uh, very little. You know, she, didn't, she never thought of herself as a, uh, uh, a gut-working actress. You know, for her, the policies and the politics and who was in it and what was in it was important. She was an excellent dancer. Her, you know, uh, yeah, she was an excellent dancer, a really outstanding dancer. That, that's where I think her forte was, you know. Well, she had an incredible story because she kind of hung around with Sinatra and his gang, and that was not rare. true. Not true. Not true. Hmm. She was there, but uh, she wasn't. She did a film with them, you know. She'd never written that book about Frank and the guys if she had. Um, that's it. Adios, amigos. <laughs> We're going to take room tone just for 20 seconds. Take what? Room tone. You just have to be quiet. They're just going to take room tone sound for 20 seconds. Oh.